Welcome to Big Hearted Stories. Get comfortable, our show is about to begin. And now it's showtime. Here's your host, all the way from the University of Michigan, Dr. Vic Strecker. Hi, how are you everyone? I hope everyone is having a good time. I hope you're all relaxed at this amazing show. I hope you're dressed up to the nines and I hope you're having a glass of bubbly or something else and really enjoying yourself because this is the event of the season. I just wanna tell you, this is an amazing event. I know it's online and you might have your bunny slippers on. That's okay, no problem, I do. But hey, I'm gonna start out with a little five minute story just to begin this because it really relates to me anyway to the reason why we're all here. Last night I was with my wife, my brother, my sister and my mother celebrating my dad's 89th birthday. Here's a picture of him 60 years ago as he and my mom were taking us to Southeast Asia for a year where he was starting to do research there. I'm the kid at the top with my head on his heart. Earlier this year, that heart started failing him and he suffered two major heart attacks. The University of Michigan Medical Center actually gave him new stents and gave him his 89th birthday that we had last night. So I'm deeply grateful to the University of Michigan and the Medical Center for everything they did. You know, I like to put on my wallpaper of my smartphone the things that matter most to me. And, you know, what matters most to me gives me direction and purpose. And my mom and dad mean a great deal to me. Our older adults mean a great deal to all of us. They give us a purpose for living. And this is an evening when we can become purposeful, when we can give back to them. So I wanna thank everyone for being here and coming out to support Big Hearts for Seniors. It's really gonna be a wonderful event. This is an evening of storytelling and a virtual silent auction that runs through August the 7th. Now, by the way, this is pretty new. I don't know of any other group that has run a, a program like this that's online. It's challenging. There are a lot of people helping to support this and we'll talk about them a little bit later, but really we've had an amazing group of supporters and already we've had so much support from you. There are over 750 households from 27 states, including Puerto Rico. And there also, we have six countries represented as well. Uh, they've all registered for this event. That is a very big event for Big Hearts for Seniors. So really, I hope all of you will pick up a little champagne and toast to that. That's just amazing. Also, you know, from the registrants, we've had about $11,000 that's been donated. From the sponsors, we've had another large amount of money. And then from the auction, we already have had some money coming in. So overall right now, so far, we have a little more than $50,000 that's been donated. What's our goal? Our goal this year, and it's a very needed goal, is $100,000. So we need $50,000 more. And I hope this evening will not only be a, a way to share these amazing stories from amazing people, but also to point out just how unbelievably important these programs are, and they're more important than ever now. So let's talk about three ways to donate. There are three ways to donate in this program. There is a donation link, and that link is on the website. So that's just gonna run across. You see at the bottom, there's that link that's going across. You can, that's the easiest way to do this. Just pop on that donation link and donate some money. Donate what you can. Donate what you can possibly afford because this is a time to transcend, to do what you can to help all of these other people in so much need right now. The second is if you have an iPhone, you can turn it to the camera mode and simply hold it up to the screen. This icon that you see, that funny looking icon on the left, just hold it right up to the screen in camera mode and it should automatically give you a link right away to donate. That makes it easy too. So number one is a donation link. Number two is if you have an iPhone, just put it in camera mode and put it right up to the screen. Now, if you have an Android phone, 
then you need a what's called a QR or a quick response app. And you can download the app if you want. Maybe you already have the app. Um, and you can hold that up to the screen and it'll automatically send you to this donation site too. So that's number two. And then number three is the old fashioned way. And that is mailing us a check. And that's really easy too, because there's an address uh, on the donation link on the website. There's a simple address you can make your check out to. So we'd like to thank all of our sponsors for supporting this very unique event, this virtual event program. And by the way, all of the sponsors are highlighted in the virtual event program that you received with your confirmation. We also want to give a shout out to two organizations that really have helped us a great deal. Number one is Humana. Humana underwrote the technology for this virtual event. And there's a lot of technology in this. There's a lot of people to thank for that. And Humana underwrote the technology. So thank you so much, Humana. And then the second is Memory Lane for Assisted Living. You just saw a video from them. They are the presenting sponsor. They've been with us since the inception of our 2020 event when, you know, before COVID-19, they were going to sponsor the in-person, in-house event. And, uh, you know, then suddenly everything had to change and they just continued their support. As we had to move into this virtual online support system, they said, absolutely, we are going to be the presenting sponsor. So thank you, Memory Lane Assisted Living. It's been awesome. Now we have a very special message from these very special directors of these five Big Hearts for Seniors program. On behalf of Ann Arbor Meals on Wheels, the Housing Bureau for Seniors, Osher Lifelong Learning Institute, Silver Club Memory Programs, and Turner Senior Wellness Program, we want to thank you for joining our virtual Big Hearts for Seniors fundraiser this year. While many components of our program and operations have changed over the past few months due to COVID-19, one thing that has remained constant has been our dedication to our community and those that we serve. We remain steadfast in our commitment to ensuring that older adults continue to receive nutritious food, housing support, opportunities to engage in educational events, supportive respite care, and wellness programs. Your support tonight helps to ensure that this will continue to be possible. While we continue to show up for those we serve, we are grateful that you have showed up tonight in support of our programs and the work that we do.
Thank you so much. Wow. And you know what? We miss Jennifer Howard in there. And so Jennifer, would you like to uh, talk about your program? Yes. Hi, everybody. Um, this is this is live, of course. Um, just wanted to say, as we tune in from our respective homes around the world, we are thrilled to present to you Big Hearted Stories, Experiences on Aging. Thank you so much, Jen. That's wonderful. And by the way, you know, one thing about this kind of program, there will be mistakes. We promise that, you know, things will happen in this because this is technology and things go wrong and it's funny and it's not as easy as doing it the other, the old fashioned way. So we're going to have fun and I hope you guys all can roll with this and every once in a while grab a little adult beverage and enjoy yourselves. I certainly am going to. So tonight, is an opportunity for people to tell their stories and to celebrate the experiences of aging. And I know a lot of people think, oh, aging, it's, you know, it's so hard and it's nothing but bad things. It's not. And as these storytellers will talk about, there's so much beauty in aging as well. And we hope to bring that out tonight. So to do that, we sent out an invitation for people to send us their stories. This is well in advance of this program. And we received a massive response. And then a panel of judges selected six storytellers to tell their own true story. This is very difficult to choose, by the way. There are a lot of amazing stories to choose from, really tough competition. This is a Kentucky Derby of storytelling. So we've got some really, really great storytellers in this. Each storyteller was asked to provide a photo that represented their story. So that photo will show up in each of the stories. It's really beautiful. We, we recorded every one of the stories, except one, which we'll get to in just a second, in an empty con auditorium. Remember, at, at the University of Michigan, you drive by on Huron, you see this building that looks like the shape of a Pringle can. That's a con auditorium. So people uh, told the story there, but totally socially distant, distanced. So masks were worn by everybody, except for the storytellers, of course. Uh, and the storytellers couldn't tell how things were going. Can you imagine being a storyteller and being video during this? And you have no idea. Everyone's staring at you with a mask over their face. That's tough. So these storytellers had the most, like, you know, that's, that's a high bar. They had a high bar to jump over. So we also, they couldn't get any read from the audience. They also couldn't get any applause, of course, because it was all just being videotaped. And I know that you might not be able to applaud, although of course you might want to, that's cool. If you want to go ahead and applaud at your home. Uh, but please, if you want, let us know whether you liked the story by using the chat feature. You can pop in just a way to go, or you know, how about this, or it reminded me of this. So use the chat feature, let's share, let's be a community all together. Even though it's a virtual community, let's be a community this evening, okay? Now again, three ways to donate. There's the donation link, there's that special QR code, which you see on the left side of your screen right now. And on your iPhone, you can just hold the camera app on your iPhone up to the icon, and it should just automatically connect and send you to uh, the donation site. Or if you have an Android, it requires a QR scanner app. Um, and number three, you can just send a check by mail to the um, address uh, on, on the website. So also, by the way, Remember, there is a silent auction too, and that's going on until August 7th. All right, so I'd like to kick this off a little bit. My wife and I have talked about what we would like to give to this. And I want to make sure you know, you can donate any time during this show, okay? You can donate during a storyteller. You can donate right after. You can donate while I'm blabbing all the time. You can donate whenever you want, okay? It's important to think about that donation in those three different ways, wherever you're going to do it. But I want to say this. My wife and I would like to get that rolling, okay? So we're going to match the next $5,000 that comes in. So Jerry and I are going to match the next $5,000 that comes in. So you're going to double your money, okay? So from all of this, we hope we're going to just kick off everything and get $10,000 more. We want to blow the doors off what we have ever done in the past because you know what? We need it. These big hearts need it more than ever right now. There's no better time. There's no better group, in my opinion, that you could donate to. Now, let's start off with the first storyteller. Let me introduce storyteller number one, Roger Parker. 
Roger grew up on a farm near Ann Arbor listening to his grandfather's stories. And by the way, he's been a United Methodist preacher for 40 years. So he knows how to tell stories, right? Roger is a musician and he's played piano in dance bands and in jazz ensembles since he was a teenager. And this is a story about his musical partnership with his close friend, Ed Cox. So here's Roger Parker. His story is titled Salt and Pepper. I met Ed Cox in an ensemble class at the Nashville Jazz Workshop. He was playing tenor sax and I was on the piano. And we were by far the oldest members of that ensemble. I was 71, Ed was 92. And of course, being the oldest people there, we were the ones who always got there early. So here we are with our instruments, waiting for everybody else. What do we do? Begin to play something. Ed would begin to play some tune and I would recognize it and join right in. I'd start some tune and he'd play a jazz lick with it. I commented, Ed, you and I could be an ensemble all by ourselves. Well, he jumped on that like a goose on a worm. He said, let's do it. I said, well, yes, let's do it. And before I knew it, we were an ensemble, a duo, playing uh, the nursing home circuit. And we were well received. We were very popular because we were their kind of people playing their kind of music. But more than that, Ed, Ed was one who always wanted to make, not just make music, but to make friends. And he would make a connection. And I was always amazed, always amazed when, when he would look out there over a group and find somebody that looked like they didn't come from around here, try to figure out where they came from. And then he'd greet them in their own native language. He was making friends. It wasn't long before Ed decided that our group needed a name. He said, I think we should be called Salt and Pepper. He said, I'll be Salt, you be Pepper. And so we began to introduce ourselves as that spicy musical aggregation, Salt and Pepper. And he would say, I'm Professor Morton Salt. And of course, I'm Dr. Pepper. Always wanted it to be fun. He was great with endings, big endings for songs. One day he said, I want to end this song like this. He said, when you're smiling, when you're smiling, the whole world smiles at you and you and you and you and you and, you, and oh yes, and me. Jazz chord. I learned pretty early on that there was this hand that came out. He was playing the saxophone and the hand would come out like this. He didn't think I always needed to know exactly what that was going to happen there. But I just learned that it meant stop, pay attention, something's going to happen. One time, he was singing the Tennessee Waltz. I remember the night and the Tennessee Waltz, and I know just how much I have lost. And he, he kind of folded it on himself, and he began to weep, and he got his handkerchief out. He said, now, just, just a bit, I'll be okay. Just give me a minute. Looked up, said, think I'm going to get me a dog. Dog doesn't care if you're rich or you're poor. The dog doesn't care if you're smart or you're stupid. Dog doesn't care if you're beautiful or if you're ugly. The dog just waits for you to come home. And as soon as you put that hand on that doorknob, he comes running, wagging his tail behind him because if he was wagging in front of him, he'd be going in reverse. Yes, I lost my little darling the night they were playing the beautiful Tennessee Waltz. 
We like to play uplifting tunes, happy tunes. But one day Ed said, I want to play the blues. I want to play the blues in a nursing home, Ed? Yeah, I want to play the blues. They'll, they'll love it. He said, most people don't know what the blues are. Oh. The blues are a medication for a done gone wrong situation. So we played the blues and he was right. They loved it. But one day I called Ed about a gig, waiting for him to say, let's do it. And there was a pause. He said, I can't come. I can't come? No, can't come. I'm in the box. You're in the box? I'm in the box. I'm in the hospital. Well, you know how it is when you have to get up in the middle of the night and you have to go. And if that happens too often, it can become irritating. Well, if you have to get up in the middle of the night and you have to go, but you can't go, that can become a medical emergency. And Ed was in the hospital. I was there visiting Ed and he was ready to go. He wanted to get out of the hospital and get on with our nursing home circuit gigs. And the doctor came in and they began to talk about what it would take for him to be ready to be discharged. And then he said, Mr. Cox, now you know that you have an advanced case of colon cancer. And then we talked about this and, and we've decided not to do surgery and not really to treat it. So it will get worse. And Ed said, I know. Well, that's an other thing, which apparently he thought I didn't need to know. But now I was learning, I was learning how much it took for him to do all the things he was doing. I learned that when he got up in the morning on the day of a gig, he immediately had to get into his finery. Because if he didn't, he wouldn't be able to get his feet into his wingtip shoes. And he did not want to go anywhere without those wingtip shoes. But we kept on going. We kept on playing. Till one day, Ed said, I'm going on a trip. This will be my last trip. He says, I've been all over the world. But I want to go to Trinidad, back to Trinidad, where he'd been stationed in the military. His daughter insisted on going with him. He insisted on taking a professional videographer with him to record the occasion. He came back all aglow. He says it was great. He says everywhere I went, I saw these places I remembered, and they're videoing it, and people would begin to ask, who are you? He said, I told them, I am the man who brought the pan to the land. He, he had to explain to me that pan was the term that the people of Trinidad used for their steel drums and that he was one of those soldiers who had brought those oil drums and left them behind, out of which the people of Trinidad fashioned those instruments. Well, on a hunch, a few months ago, I googled Edward Cox Trinidad. And wouldn't you know it? There is a YouTube video. Here is Ed Cox in his 94th year, very slowly making his way to the middle of a stage in a jazz club in Trinidad. White suit, white hat, wingtip shoes, saxophone hanging around his neck, counting off the tempo of the rhythm section and playing the blues taking a final dose of his self-prescribed medication just a few months before we lost him. Now, I like to play, and my favorite people to play with are some people who are part of something called a silver club. We have a great time together. I do miss my old duo buddy. But every once in a while, 
It's like he's leaning over my shoulder, whispering in my ear, don't just make music. Make friends. Make fun. And every once in a while, just stop and pay attention. Because something remarkable is apt to happen. And it usually does. Thank you. That was so amazing. Uh, Roger Parker, thank you so much. A as you were speaking, it reminded me of something Steve Jobs said as he was dying of pancreatic cancer. He told the 2005 uh, Stanford class of graduates at the commencement address that death is life's change agent. It's the single best invention of life. That's an interesting thing to say, but one thing that we know as we grow older is that we're exposed to more people who then pass away. And one thing that it might do is it, it, it produces almost a shadow of contrast to the life that we have. It brings out life more. It makes life a little more alive. It helps us think about what matters most in our lives. Marcus Aurelius, this famous uh, ancient Roman emperor and Stoic philosopher said, don't live your life as if you're gonna live 10,000 years. While you live, do good. I love that, that we're here for this brief time on this planet. And while we're here for this brief time, maybe we should be doing what Roger Parker's colleague did. And uh, you just start having the biggest life that you possibly can. And why wait until old age, frankly? But um, it's so important. I also wanna just say there, there's one thing that came in chat. There's a lot of things coming in chat, which is so cool. Thank you very much for your chat applauses and, and your comments. But Tom Guida said, come on, people, let's get the money rolling in for the $5,000 match. Let's go, guys. Let's keep going and let's keep rolling. Let's knock the socks off of this, you know, these old goals that people had. Let's think about this in a whole new way. Let's think about what we could possibly do to make these programs really shine during this time, especially. And one of the programs that is really amazing, really shining, is a program that actually my mother and my sister, Chris, um, worked on. They worked in as volunteers for Meals on Wheels. Ann Arbor Meals on Wheels since 1974 has worked to reduce hunger and food insecurity for our inbound, for our homebound adult neighbors in the Ann Arbor area who because of their health are unable to shop and prepare nutritious foods and meals for themselves. So what would your donation pay for? If you're gonna, you know, anytime I'm giving a donation, I wanna know what's it gonna cover? Well, older adults need meals just like everybody else does. Okay, so here's what a thousand dollar donation will do. A thousand dollar donation from you will provide 140 hot, nutritious meals to their clients. 140 hot, nutritious meals to their clients. And they cook them. It's really amazing. I mean, the, there are chefs, there are cooks at Ann Arbor Meals on Wheels who do the cooking, and it's very cost effective. $1,000 will provide 140 hot, nutritious meals to clients, and you need meals, you know, to, you, you need meals to be safe, right? So everyone needs meals, but you also need the meals to be safe. So $500 will pay for 40 coolers that would ensure clients' meals stay in food safe temperatures when being delivered. That's nice. Now, by the way, after you've eaten some of these meals, like any other meal, at some time, you probably have to go to the bathroom, right? Well, guess what? $100 will purchase two months of toilet paper for their clients, for 10 clients. $100 will purchase two months worth of toilet paper for 10 clients and they supply that. So better wash up, right? Well, guess what? $25, if that's all you can afford, fine. $25 will provide a bottle of hand soap for 20 clients. You see how important this is. Any amount of your donation will help these people in Ann Arbor Meals on Wheels. 